In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Our Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for our leadership development session. Thank you for your people. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for their dutifulness and how we accept responsibility. We thank you because you put it in our heart always to be here so we can hear your word that will lift us up, that will develop us, and that will lead us in the right direction. We're asking, Lord, tonight to speak to every heart once again in Jesus' name. And we pray that your word will lift us up, will train us, will develop us and make us better Christians, better ministers, better preachers, and better pastors in Jesus' name. I will pray that your word also enrich our hearts, that we'll be able to reach the lives of other people. Give us all the enabling grace that we need so that, Lord, this work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can see now we're coming to Hebrews chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. The apostle is coming to the end, the conclusion of the epistle. And now he begins this last chapter, the final chapter, where the word continue. And he says, let brotherly love continue. And as we look at the word of God, that word continue is very important. Grace, godliness, and good virtues are only of value if we continue in them. We have grace, we have godliness, and we have good virtues that the Lord has given us. The goodness of those things is in the word continue. As we think about our love, we think about our loyalty, we think about our labor. All those things are recognized by God and they're rewarded by God on one condition that will continue. Think about our conviction, the conviction we have in the word of God that brought us to salvation. The conviction we had that brought us to sanctification. The conviction we had that brought us to service in the house of the Lord. And all those things are only of value and they're only beneficial if we continue. The word continue is very important. And so the epistle, the epistle now coming to the conclusion, it commences with the word continue. I pray you'll continue. I will continue. Look at John. I'm looking at John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 31. John chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 31. It says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if he continue, here is Jesus Christ, our Savior. He knows everything about salvation. He is the very Savior, is the foundation of that salvation and now he tells us the word continue goes along with salvation if he continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed he tells us in chapter 15 of john john chapter 15 and i'm reading here from verse 9 in verse 9 it says as the father has loved me so have i loved you Continue ye in my love. That word continue again appears there. And he's saying, yes, I possess the love of God. I've received the love of God. I've experienced the love of God. He says it's not enough to start. We must continue. Continue ye in my love. Acts of the Apostles chapter 14. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 14, reading from verse 22. Acts chapter 14, verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. We came to the faith, born again. We must continue exhorting them to continue the faith that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. It tells us in Acts chapter 26, 
And I'm reading from verse 19, Acts chapter 26, reading from verse 19, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but I showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles that they shall repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Then he says, For these things, for these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Look at verse 22 now. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue until this day. That's the word again. Whether you're a believer, you must continue. Or, or a worker, you must continue. Or a minister, you must continue. Or an apostle, you must continue. The word continue must be very significant in our lives, in our experiences. If we're going to reach out until the very end, what God wants us to do, Romans chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 22. Romans chapter 11, and we're reading from verse 22. It says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fail, severity, but toward thee, goodness, look at the condition, if thou continue in his goodness. The word continue is very important. You've got salvation, continue. You're sanctified, continue. You are called into service, continue. You are consecrated to God, continue. You have laid everything upon the altar, continue. You have had connection and covenant of the Lord. The word continue is very important. It says, if ye continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be caught off. I pray you will not be caught off. We're looking at Colossians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 23. Colossians chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 23. Is the word continue. Verse 23 says, If ye continue in the faith, that is, if you're going to lay claim of the inheritance of the kingdom, and you're going to remain a bona fide member or citizen of the kingdom, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. The word is continue. First Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 15. In First Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. It's talking about a married woman, a married sister. And it says, with all the challenges of pregnancy and childbirth, we can depend on either the grace of God will see her through. But look at this, she shall be saved in childbearing if they, husband and wife, if they in the family continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. The word is continued, chapter 4 of First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading here from verse 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them. All the doctrines who have learned, all the doctrines who have heard, all the doctrines who are teaching, all the doctrines of the word of Christ, it says, continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Second Timothy chapter 3. In Second Timothy chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 12. Here it says in verse 12, Ye and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There are people that will not understand your conviction. There are people that will not understand how you are so sold to the word of God, committed to the word of God, submissive to the word of God. It says because of that there will be persecution. Verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But, verse 14, tell me out loud. Continue, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. 
the word is continued. It tells us in First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 19, and then we go to verse 24. First John chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Somebody get started. And then somewhere on the line, he drops up. And then he says, I was there. He says, no, you are not there. Your heart was not there. Your mind was not there. You didn't leave the consecration, the sacrifice on the altar. Because if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, they couldn't continue, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Verse 24, let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also continue, continue, continue in the Son and in the Father. The secret of success and the secret of progress in the work of the Lord, in the ministry he has given us is to continue, continue pursuing, continue persevering and continue possessing. As we come to Hebrews chapter 13, um, now uh, we're talking about the life of loyalty that pleases God. The life of loyalty that pleases God. If we're going to please the Lord, we must be loyal and we must be abiding in the word. As we come to Hebrews chapter 13, from verse 1 all through to the end, the three things we're looking at. Number one, the practical hospitality of true ministers. The practical hospitality of true ministers. Number two, the perpetual humility in teachable members. We're all members of the body of Christ. As we became born again, we became children of God. And there must be that humility that is perpetual and will remain teachable in the kingdom of God. We receive from him and then we give it out. We're teachable and then we're able to teach others. And we get into the depths of the understanding of the word of God. On the basis of that, we're able to reach out to the people he has put under our uh, ministry the perpetual humility in teachable members number three our preserved heritage or triumphant mastery we don't remain babes we master our difficulties we master our challenges and as we have that triumphant mastery then we have our heritage preserved unto us number one the practical hospitality. Number two, the perpetual humility. Number three, our preserved heritage. Let's come to point number one. The practical hospitality of true members. I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse one. Let brotherly love continue. And then as he talks about the love, it's going to show us now the practical manifestation and the practical demonstration of such love is not just something we have on paper. It's not something we have as a theory in the mind. It's not just something we put like a doctrine. Let brotherly love continue. We're members of one another. We belong to the same spiritual family. God is our father. And the Holy Ghost is our helper. And Jesus Christ is our savior. And he brought us into the family of God. And he says, as brothers and sisters, as members of the body of Christ, we feel for each other. We relate to each other. And if uh, people have challenges or problems, it's like when, with them. We identify with them. And so he tells us now, the practical implication of that love. It tells us the proper demonstration of that love in verse 2. It says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Why did he say that? 
because you see as uh, life goes on uh, we've had some experiences and we've had some of our fingers burnt because of the people that beat the finger that fed them and because of those bad experiences you got somebody into your house and then they stole something away and you got somebody to come and live with you to provide accommodation and then uh, they, they did some on, on, on hard of things that were terrible we're likely to forget and say forget about it i'm not going to do that again he says don't do that be not forgetful to entertain strangers why for thereby some have entertained angels unawares he's talking about abraham those angels came, they were like men, and then they began to talk to him, and then they realized this is God, and then the two angels are going to Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he seek about Lord that saw those angels and said, you cannot remain outside, come in. And he was thinking that they were men, and he wanted to protect them. They entertained strangers, and then it turned out to be angels unawares. It's thinking of uh, the mother of something that she said to the husband, A man of God saw me and said this, and then they, but what was his name? And he asked of his name, and they prayed, Let that man of God come again. They were thinking it's a man, and yet it's an angel of God. It's thinking of Gideon. Gideon, that uh, you know, the angel angel confronted and told things there are people that have entertained angels unawares he said it may still happen again and so don't close your eyes and don't close your mind to the needs of strangers around you he says in verse 3 remember them that are in bonds those who are in prison those under persecution and those are in chains and they have some peculiar problems that they're going through they are suffering remember them he had said in verse 2 don't forget he says now in verse 3 remember them that are in bonds as bound with them and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body he says put yourself in their shoes Put yourself in their place and think like they will be thinking. If you were in that condition, what care would you want? What help would you request? And what kind of support and provision would you want to have? Is this do exactly the same thing unto them? Let's look at John chapter 13. John chapter 13 reading from verses 34 and 35 john chapter 13 verse 34 a new commandment i give unto you that she love one another and what the apostle was saying in hebrews chapter 13 is an amplification of this explanation of this it's an exposition of this and it's telling them this is not theory this is something practical you need to go out of your way and think of the need of that brother think of the need of that sister even think of the need of a person that you might not have met before of the stranger and it's the new commandment that christ has given if you're newborn in christ if you're a new creature in christ if you come into the new covenant this new commandment must be part of your life you must understand that other people are suffering you must not be thinking about yourself alone i need this i need that i need protection I need warmth, I need fellowship, I need love. Other people to have need and stretch out your hand of need on to other people and don't be selfishly thinking about what you want, what you desire, only for yourself alone. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. And it says, By this shall all men know not by your profession, not by your testimony, and not just by your witness, and not just by the name or the title you carry. It says by this love, practical love. It says by this love, this hospitality, and this giving of yourself, giving of yourself out to other people, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one towards 
another. And then it tells us in a first Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four, here reading from verse nine. In first Peter chapter four, verse nine, use hospitality. The word hospitality means they just care for other people, love other people, and they plant something good in the lives of other people, cheer up other people, lift up other people, and solve the problems of other people in every practical way you can. It says, use hospitality one to another without grudging without grudging i did this before and you know what came out of it i held somebody before but you know how they repaid me it says don't grudge just go ahead and keep on loving in fact the lord is telling us that even the judgment of the last days will incorporate this kind of hospitality practical things that we do to the other people that have any need we don't allow people to just be crying and shedding tears without wiping those tears away people going through suffering without contributing something to solve that problem of suffering and people going through challenges going through difficulties going through under pressure and they're almost giving up their lives and giving up uh, their christian faith and yet it doesn't concern us because we're preaching because we're evangelizing because we're going here and there and we're helping other people to come in the people who are inside some of them are almost backsliding and going out stay and see what you do for the people who are suffering look at what the judgment will incorporate on the final days in matthew chapter 25 Matthew chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 31. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the, the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth a sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand. I will be on the right hand. I said I will be on the right hand. And the goats on the left, uh -uh, I will not be there. I will not be a goat. Ah, you are not saying it for yourself. Look at verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But why? I got saved, yes. I was sanctified, yes. I demonstrated that salvation in a practical way. That's why you go in. I demonstrated that sanctification, the pure heart that is cleansed and purged from all forms of self-centeredness. You demonstrate that. That's how you go in. It's not just, you know, head knowledge salvation, head knowledge sanctification. It's not just word of mouth, lip service sanctification. No, it is something practical. Look at this, verse 35. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. That's what the word of God is reminding us. Don't just think about yourself. Help somebody. Don't just think about yourself. Feed somebody. Don't just think about yourself. Clothe somebody. Don't just think about yourself. Pay the school fees of an orphan somewhere. It says, ye took me in naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, Christ. How could you be sick? He'll explain to you. And ye visited me, visiting one another. Ah, he's not a member of my house fellowship. Forget about that. He's sick, and you heard about that. She's sick, and you heard about that. Do something. 
and not just go empty handed. They don't have food, they're suffering, they're hungry, they're dying. Do something. And you happen to be in the medical field and you hear that a brother, a sister has a need like this. Do something, something you can do to alleviate their suffering and to raise them up from the bed of affliction. It says in verse 36, naked, and ye closed me, I was sick, and ye visited me, I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink, when saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee, or when saw we thee seek, or in prison, and came unto thee? Look at the answer. In verse 40, the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, tell me out aloud, you have done it unto me. When you do anything good like that to a fellow brother, a fellow sister, or even a neighbor, somebody who does not know Christ, and through that help, and through that hospitality, and through that way, you bring them into the kingdom. Christ is going to reward you. Look at verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them, on the left hand, depart from me. He cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me no meat. You ate all your food by yourself. You spent all your money on yourself. And you had all the conveniences of life, and everything was only spent on yourself. And Jesus says, I was an hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. You were extra careful, too cautious. The world is bad. The world is sinful. If you help them now, they can turn around and do this other thing. The world does not appreciate Christian help anymore. Whatever you do, they still go back and they'll bite you and stab you at the back. That's the reason why they couldn't help any stranger naked. And you clothed me not, sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they answer him, saying, what's the next word there? They called him Lord, they were religious. They called him Lord. They knew the theory of him being Lord. And they knew the mental ascent of being he, calling him Lord. Lord, when so we thee an hunger, or thirst, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee, then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as she did it not to one of the least of these for whom I died. He died for everyone. And he doesn't want them to perish without being saved. And you saw them. And you could have helped them. Keep them alive until they hear the gospel. Until they know the Lord. But you allowed them to die without having Christ or salvation in their lives because I don't know him. It's a Samaritan. It's a stranger. And you couldn't go out of your way and forget all about the theory of what you are thinking about. It says, because you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go into, tell me out aloud, everlasting punishment you see that because the salvation they professed and the lordship of christ they professed was so theoretical he didn't have any milk of human sympathy 
He didn't have any kind of empathy and to be under their skin and to see what other people are suffering and to bear the suffering and help them. But then he says, but the righteous unto life eternal. Thank God I'll be there. I say, thank God I'll be in heaven. Romans, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We're reading from verse 13. In Romans chapter 12, reading here from verse 13, distributing to the necessity of the saints. Some of the saints are poor. Some of the saints are hungry. Some of the saints are homeless. Some of the saints are under persecution. Some of the saints are suffering ill treatment. Some of the saints are accused wrongly. And they are charged to, maybe they are charged to court, local court. And they don't have anything to bail themselves out. The saints, they're innocent. And yet, you can help, you can give some time, and look at their case and help them out, distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. To calculating. You're calculating, I'll do it this way, I'll do it this way, so that I will not uh, get involved with, you know, having to help anybody. I'll pretend as if I didn't know. Be not wise in your own conceit. The Spirit of God is talking to you. And there's a person there, there's another person there. You can help. Offer a helping hand. Show some love. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men if it be possible as much as lies in you live peaceably with how many people all men those who are high those who are low those who are simple those who are difficult those who are easy to live with those who are difficult to live with it is yours to maintain that peace because you want to get to heaven if it be possible as much as lies in you live peaceably with all men dearly beloved avenge not yourselves brother that give place unto us for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord therefore if thine enemy hunger tell me if my enemy hunger, I will. Ah, I've lost my crowd. I will feed him. Somebody there, I will feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. I will give him drink. There should be no retaliation in the life of any child of God. You are born again, a child of God. No retaliation, no revenge. He threw that at me. Wait a minute and see what I'm going to throw back at him. That's not a Christian. He may profess to be a Christian. I'm born again, born again. Everybody professes to be born again. It is the life we live. It is the hospitality. It is the love. It is the obedience to the word of God that shows really we're children of God. It says, for his so doing, thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Amen. The Lord grant us the grace to do that in Jesus' name. We're well, coming back to Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading here from verse 7. Hebrews chapter 13. We're reading from verse 7. Point number 2 now. The perpetual humility in teachable members. Perpetual humility in teachable 
members. Look at it in verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you, who are spoken unto you the word of God, whose face follow, whose lifestyle follow, whose expression of face follow, whose endurance of face follow, whose sacrifice of faith follow whose lifestyle follow remember them those are leaders are pastors the ones who teach us the watch of god it says we shouldn't forget them and live our lives independent of them they have rule over us they control the direction we go they teach us the word of god we must remain teachable and it says whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation considering the outcome and the product of their lifestyle look at verse 17 obey them which have the rule over you it should be this connection between the teacher and the student between the preacher the pastor and the members between the leader and the followers it is a connection of obedience to the watch of god why because they're not saying their own opinion they're not telling you this is what i like this is what i want they're telling us the watch of god they are the channels through which the almighty god is revealing his might unto us and actually obeying them is not really obeying them it's obeying the lord's word that they're teaching us obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls they're not looking for our money they're not looking for uh, you know to get something from us they're watching over our souls so that we will get to heaven and it says that they may do each way say joy it says a day that must give account they'll give account if you never expose yourself to your pastor to your leader if you never expose yourself to the one your shepherd whom god has put over you and you're always hiding you're behind the screen somewhere, behind the curtain somewhere, and then you're always hiding, hiding, and he knows nothing about you. He says, you must give account. I was going to give account. And then he says that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. The Lord is telling us that we need to recognize as well as respect, as well as obey the leaders that God has put over us. We're looking at First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm reading here from verse 12. First Thessalonians chapter 5, reading from verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. They're teaching us, they're counseling us, they're leading us in the way of righteousness. And it says we should know them, recognize them. Look at verse 13, and to esteem them very highly in our mind, in our thoughts, in our appreciation. And we're looking at the better side, the good side of their ministry. Look at how they labor on us. Look at how they preach unto us. And look at how they search deep into the word of God and reveal that to us. Esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, for their ministry's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. The Lord give you understanding. And the Lord make that practical in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. 1 Timothy chapter 5, I read from verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. The elders, the preachers, the pastors, the leaders, 
the truth well. They guide us well. They don't just come and, you know, say anything without preparing. They prepare themselves to feed us with the watch of God, with the watch of life. It says, they rule well, count them of double honor, especially they who labor in watch and doctrine. That means we have many kinds of leaders. There are some leaders over there, leaders over there. But hey, there's this special leader. And he labors in the world. And he labors in doctrine. It says, count them of double honor. First Corinthians chapter 16. In First Corinthians chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 15 and verse 16. First Corinthians chapter 16. Reading from verse 15, I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanas, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. These are leaders, they're committed sacrificially they give of what they have even when it appears they are getting to the ebb the edge of their strength they still keep on laboring because they are addicted to the ministry of the saints look at verse 16 that ye submit yourselves unto such they're feeding you they're helping you they're encouraging you and they're showing you the path to progress and you're always on their mind and they carry you like a mother is carrying her children it says such people you submit yourself unto such and to everyone that helpeth us we preach and then they interpret what we're preaching and they explain what we're preaching and they expound and apply what we're preaching unto you they're helping us in the ministry and they're laboring it says submit yourself Unto them that requires humility. We're looking at First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. I read from verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Submit yourself unto the elder. Look at verse 1. The elders which are among you I exhort who am also an elder and the witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. It says such elders submit yourself unto them and be obedient to the word of God they're teaching you. And uh, again, when we submit ourselves unto them, we're not really submitting to man, we're submitting to God. Because it's God that sent them, it's God that gave them the word, and all they're giving us is the word they got from the Lord. And as we accept, as we believe, as we obey, as we submit, actually, we're submitting to the Lord. Matthew chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 40. Matthew chapter 10 reading from verse 40 it says in verse 40 he that receiveth you receiveth me it's not the height of the person it's not the look of the person it's the message that christ has given to the apostle and because christ has given him that message it's not their message they didn't, uh, you know, add anything or subtract anything. Anyone receiving them is receiving the Lord. That's why it says, He that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Why? Because Christ even did not speak his own word. He spoke the word that the Father had given him. And whosoever received him, actually received the Lord the God of heaven who had sent him. Luke chapter 10. We're looking at verse 16. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 16. It says in verse 16, He that heareth you, heareth me. He that heareth you, my disciple, I send you forth for the word. I put the word in your mouth. And I say, you keep on teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Don't add your word, don't subtract from it. And as you go like that, standing for me, 
representing me. And there you are speaking my word to the people. He that heareth you, heareth me. He that despises you, despiseth me. He who rejects the word, you are not the one they are rejecting, they are rejecting me. He that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. John chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 20. John chapter 13, verse 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. Now you see, it doesn't matter the person I'm sending. You might be more educated than that person, but he has the word of life. He has the watch of Christ. He has the heavenly revelation. And the heavenly revelation is coming from Christ and coming through him unto you. Whomsoever, whatever his name, whatever his status in society, whatever his background, whatever his look, whatever his tribe, wherever he's coming from, I have chosen him. And if you receive him, you receive me. He says, verily, verily, certainly, certainly, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Or you say, if somebody comes from the Lord, it's natural, we're going to receive him if we're sure it's coming from the Lord. If we're sure the word is preaching, it's coming from the Lord. Every person will always receive somebody like that. Not always so. Look at Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44. And I'm reading here from verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 16. As for the word which thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. These people had made up their minds. It's like they knew it was from the Lord. They knew that Jeremiah never spoke his own word, that the Lord Almighty God had appointed him. And in fact, he had ordained him a prophet over the nations before he was even born. And then they say, yes, we know he's sanctified, he's set apart, and he's ordained to preach the word. And the word is coming from God. But all the same, we're not going to receive that. That's what the Lord is saying we should avoid. The word of God comes to you. And then you accept that word hook line and sinker you accept it in every detail and you're not like these people that said as for the word which thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the lord we will not hearken unto thee look at verse 17 but we will certainly do whatsoever sin goeth forth out of our own mouths they said we're so self-conceited and we're full of self. Only what comes out of us shall we obey, shall we do. But the Lord is saying we shouldn't do like that. We should be obedient to the word of God coming from the ministers of God. Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 12. Philippians chapter 2. We're looking at it in verse 12. It says, uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved... As she have always obeyed, are you there? I said, are you there? You will always obey. I will always obey. Wherefore, my beloved, as she have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What was Paul the Apostle telling the Philippians? You have always obeyed, now obey, obey, and obey more. Because of their salvation, it's not for himself. It's not because, you know, if you obey, I'll feel happy. If you obey, I'll be on top of the world. If you obey, I'll be very grateful that my ministry is profitable. He says, no, it's because of your salvation. Because if you reject the word, then the Lord will reject you. 
be obedient. You'll be obedient in Jesus' name. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. We're reading from verse 14. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 14. In verse 14, it says, If any man obey not a word by this epistle, if any man obey not a word by this epistle, hey, Paul, hold on. Who do you think you are? If anybody obeys not our word, it says you too, hold on. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. The epistle he wrote to them was given by inspiration of God. He knew it came from God and he passed it on to them. But he said, because we are the people that preached it, that's why he said our word, but still the word of God. And if anyone does not obey that word that he has given to them in this epistle, note that man have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Don't partake, don't be a partaker with the people that reject the word of God, that trample the word of God on the ground, and that they want to substitute the word of God with another gospel, a cheap gospel that does not save. I pray God will give us wisdom. Somebody there shout, Amen. First Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 22. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. The heart needs to be purified. And self has to go away. Pride has to go away. The depravity and the carnality in the heart of man has to be purged out. And then it will be easy for us to obey the word of God. Seeing uh, you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that she love one another with a pure heart fervently. We will. In the name of the Lord, we'll obey. First Peter chapter 4 verse 17. First Peter chapter 4 verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Disobedience has a price. It's very costly. When we're disobedient to the word of God, maybe because we didn't know the chapter and the verse, it's coming from the preacher, it's coming from the pastor, and we'll say, no, I've made up my mind, I'm not going to just obey everything he says, we'll be the loser. We must be teachable, and we must be humble, perpetually humble. Coming back now to Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 7. It says, remember them. Remember them for good. Remember them pleasantly. Remember them joyfully. Remember them happily. That he's speaking the word of God and I'm going to obey. Remember them which have the rule over you. Who are spoken unto you the word of God. Whose face follow. They're considering the end of their conversation. Verse 17, obey them, don't just remember them. Obey them, don't just appreciate them. All this word of God we're hearing, it says obey them that have the rule over you. Don't, don't say it's not over me. It's not, you cannot control me. It cannot lead me. It cannot guide me. Yes, it should. It's your pastor. Yes, it should. It's your shepherd. Yes, it should. It's the one direct you to the way of life eternal. Yes, it should. It's the one that is caring for you and pray, praying for you that you'll get to heaven. You'll obey in Jesus' name. You'll accept in Jesus' name. You'll be submissive in Jesus' name. Obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourselves for the watch for your souls. They watch over your souls as 
they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. What does that mean? It means that if you are not obedient, if they are faithful to God, they still have to keep on preaching and they still have to keep on counseling and they still have to keep on directing the way of the Lord. Even if you refuse, they still have to keep on doing the work of God. But look at this, for that is unprofitable for you. You will not benefit from the great ministry of the ministers and the preachers if you are not obedient to the word. I'll be obedient in Jesus' name. I said, I will be obedient in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, reading from verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Ye shall eat the good of the land. Let's come back now to the final point. Our preserved heritage or triumphant mastery. Our preserved heritage with triumphant mastery. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 8 and verse 9. Hebrews 13, verses 8 and 9. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. On the basis of that, Christ remains the same. He does not change. His word has not changed. His demand has not changed. His authority has not changed. And his condition of righteousness and holiness before we get to heaven, that has not changed his office, his ministry as Savior, as Sanctifier, as Baptizer in the Holy Ghost, as Healer, as Redeemer, as Deliverer, has not changed. The one that is still coming back and he said is coming again. He has not changed Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines as if God has changed, as if Christ has changed, as if the interpretation of the word of God has changed. False doctrine coming in, strange doctrine coming to you, diverse and different opinions coming to you, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is good, a good thing, that the heart be established with grace. The grace that saved, you established in that. The grace that sanctifies, you established in that. The grace that propels you and makes you to pursue the work of God, you are established in that. Your heart is steadfast. Your heart is established. You are not waving here and there, moving here and there, moving with the wind. And then it says, and not what meets, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Why does he tell us that we should not be moved, we should not waver, because of all these winds that blow? We're looking at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 11. This is the condition of what will be happening at the end of the world which has come upon us. Matthew chapter 24 verse 11. It says, and many false prophets shall arise, shall rise, and shall deceive many. That's why people are wavering. That's why people are confused. That's why people are getting to strange doctrine. And it says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, tell me out aloud, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom, that same gospel at the time of Jesus, that same gospel that the apostles emphasized and preached, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Look at verse 35. Verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away. Tell me the rest of that verse. 
heaven and earth shall pass away. Tell me the rest. But my word shall not pass away. Every doctrine he taught, every word he spoke, every declaration he made, every sin he said, from the precepts to the promises to the prophecy, everything abides the same because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever and his words abide ever. Romans chapter 16. In Romans chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 16, reading from verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. What do you do? And avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fierce speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Remain in the word, abide in the word. Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 6. Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, unto a perverted gospel, unto diverse kinds of gospels, unto strange gospel. I marvel that you are so soon removed from the true gospel and from the true grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which were preached unto you, let him be accursed. Whatever his name, whatever his title, whatever his profession, wherever he's coming from, let him be accursed. If somebody is under the curse of God, can he get to heaven? No. Those who pervert the gospel, and they go into strange doctrine, diverse doctrines, confusing doctrines, things that are not established in the words of Christ. It says they are cursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that we have preached, ye have received, let him be accursed. We're coming to First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Prove all things. You hear anything from anybody, you have your Bible, compare it with the scriptures. Compare it with what you have been learning. If it's different from what you have been learning, say that's a deviation. That's going into error. That is false. That's not right. It says you hold fast that which is good. In 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Reading from verse 13. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. Hold fast the form of sound doctrine. Don't abandon it. Hold it fast. The form of sound doctrine, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Hold fast the word of God. Don't deviate, don't drop the truth. Take it yourself. First Timothy chapter 4, from verses 15 and 16. First Timothy chapter 4. Verses 15 and 16, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, completely to them. Immerse yourself in the word of God. Drink in the word 
and make sure that the word you're soaked with the word you meditate upon the word of God and you're giving yourself without reservation unto that word it says that thy prophet he may appear to all verse 16 take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee I pray we'll hold on to the word to the very end Hebrews chapter 3 Hebrews chapter 3 reading from verse 6 Hebrews chapter 3 I'm reading here from verse 6 in verse 6 but Christ as a son over his own house whose house are we if we hold fast you see that every part of scripture reminding us that this is what we have to do that we don't get into strange doctrine and diverse opinions if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end verse 12 take heed brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God but exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold you see that we're made partakers of Christ and we're going to inherit what he has gone to prepare for us if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until when until the end you'll hold fast in Jesus name Jude Jude chapter 1 reading from verse 3 Jude verse 3 beloved when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. There's no other faith, there's no other gospel, there's no other doctrine. That same faith, that same gospel, that same word that was once for all delivered unto the saints, you earnestly contend for it. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, reading from verse 25. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. No strange doctrine. No new doctrine, no modern day psychedelic doctrine, the word of God, the very words of Christ, that which ye have already that produced salvation, that which ye have already that made us to think seriously on sanctification, that same thing that you have, it says that which ye have already, peace and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, hold it fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Chapter 3, we're reading from verse 11. Chapter 3 of Revelation, verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. You will not lose your reward. You'll not lose your crown in Jesus' name. Our preserved heritage with triumphant mastery. You have to be master over your own soul, over your own heart, over your own flesh. There must be no self-indulgence. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 25, having mastery, triumphant mastery. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery 
is temperate in all things in ministry in your understanding in your pursuit of the service the lord has given you you must not be going backwards you must be going forward and master the challenges ahead of you so that you will be a vessel unto honor always emphasizing the word of god without fear and without favor because it says every man every minister that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do each to obtain a corruptible crown but we are incorruptible I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Here is a mastery, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. I pray will not be cast away. Second Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, you see that in the plural, check up areas of your life. In this area of your life, maybe you are flabby. That area of your life, you look warm. That area of your life, you are shaking, you are trembling. That area of your life, you are easily shifted. That area of your life, you easily compromise. It says, look at all those areas and then go to the Lord in prayer and be strengthened in the inner man. If any man also strive for masteries, yet you see not crowned, except a strive lawfully. You'll strive lawfully. You'll do the work of God. The work of God will not fail in your hands in Jesus' name. Did I hear an amen? Second yeah. Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Will you? Preach the word. I asked, will you? Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort without long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall they heave to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Amen. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, will give you as well. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. The Lord will keep you faithful to the very edge. Verse 18, verse 18, we're going to read this after me. The Lord shall deliver me. Read this after me. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom I be glory forever and ever amen he'll preserve your life you'll not fail you'll not fall you'll not backslide you will not compromise you'll not go to various diverse doctrines 
you will not be disobedient to your pastor. Give me a good day. Amen. We'll follow the example and the face of the one leading us in Jesus' name. And this work of the Lord will prosper in your hands. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. That's the word we've heard of being loyal to please God all the days of our lives. Having hospitality, practical, humility, perpetual, heritage, preserved, that that will become true in every one of our lives. Let the word soak in into you and let the word enrich your life and benefit and profit by the word we have heard.